Hello to all of our Facebook friends. Welcome to our Cat at Home series. My name is Ron Wilson. I am the uh, uh, training consultant for Caterpillar Paving Products, and I specialize in uh, asphalt pavers and screeds. Okay, this video series is meant to give you a way to continue to learn about the CAT equipment uh, from the different product experts. I am here today to tell you a little bit about what we call paving by the numbers. Okay, um, if you're watching this as a replay, keep those comments coming and we'll be checking back to answer them. Okay, and don't forget to check back in next week to learn more about the new 150 AWD motor grader and our customer service value agreements. All right, uh, so let's get started on this paving by the numbers. All right, a little bit of background on the paving by the numbers. Uh, many years ago, Caterpillar went out and surveyed a number of contractors out uh, and uh, asked them what their main concern was whenever they were, were paving. The majority of the contractors came back to us indicating that they always had problems taking off from a joint, okay, a joint or a header. So they would either come off high or come off low or inconsistent most of the time. Uh, they were just playing a guessing game. Um, so Caterpillar worked with these contractors and came up with a method. <laughs> yeah, came up with a step-by-step -step instruction on how to set your machine up before you take off from a joint. Okay, and we call that paving by the numbers. When we first developed this, this was a 14-step procedure. Uh, but a few years back, uh, we modified it and uh, added one more step to it. And now it is a 15-step procedure. So that's what we're going to talk about today is the 15 steps to paving by the numbers. All right? We found that if you follow these steps, right, each time you get ready to take off from a joint, you're going to come off that joint right, square and even about 95% of the time. Okay, not going to tell you 100% of the time because there's always that human factor involved there. So, okay, so let's get started here. We'll talk about our paving by the numbers. First step, always heat the screed. All right, we need to get that screed plate hot enough so the asphalt doesn't stick to it. All right, anytime you take off with a, with a cold screed, the screed plate is going to catch asphalt, stick to it, right? And then when you come off your joint or header, that screed is going to go straight to the ground, right? So it'll drag that material out and uh, it will not support the screed. So we need to make sure that that screed is hot enough so that asphalt slicks off of it as you take off. Okay, there are several different types of screed heat uh, on the machines out there today. Right, you still have fuel-fired burners out there. You still have uh, propane burners out there. Uh, we at Caterpillar on our F-Series models uh, use electric screed heat. Okay, so each one of our screed plates is heated by an electric element. Okay, we're going to talk mainly about the F-Series tractor and screed in this uh, presentation here. So when we Turn our screed heat on. We have a button over here in our displays, right? And this button is on all four displays. So you can turn your screed heat on from any of our displays on the machine, all right? So press that button and it brings up the next screen. Okay, the next screen, you come up here, you push this button, right? Or move it to the right, that activates your generator. Once your generator is active, then it automatically turns on your screed heaters, right? Currently, we have this one selected for 110 degrees Celsius, right? So it will take off and it will start to heat your screed plates up to that point, okay? We have different zone numbers here for the different screed plates, right? So zones one and two are for your main screed. Zone three and four are for your extender screeds. Okay, anytime you add screed extensions onto here, they will automatically populate with a different zone number. Okay, if we want to change our heating option, we push this button right here. It brings up our temperature. 
right? We got three different selections of temperature. We have 230 degrees Fahrenheit, we have 266 degrees Fahrenheit, and we have 320 degrees. Choose the temperature that fits your job the best, right? Select it, make sure there's a check mark in it, and then select OK, and then go back to your home screen. Okay, once you get back to your home screen, if you want to look at the actual temperature of your screed plates, right? We tapped on the right-hand zone, okay? And that brings up our full right-hand zone here, okay? So zone two is 63 degrees C, zone four is 65 degrees C, and uh, zone 12 shows green already. Right, you'll see three different colors right, whenever you're heating the screed. You'll see black in the top photo, gray in this one, and then green in the right-hand photo there indicates that you are up to temperature now. Right, Your end gates here will show up as uh, green all the time as there's no uh, temperature sensor in your end gates. Okay, the end gate heaters are an option on the machine. If you don't have this option, then the end gates will not show up in this uh, screen. All right, if you do have the optional heated end gates, you have the uh, option of turning them on and off using this button right here. So slide this button to the left and it turns the end gate on. All right, slide it to the right and it turns it back on. So you can see in this shot, the end gate is turned off. It turns black, right, indicating that there's no power going to the end gate. Okay, moving along, while our screed is heating up, we can go ahead and do a few more steps. Okay, step number two is position our tow arm cylinder. Now, depending on the paver you have, your tow arm cylinder right, will be positioned in different positions, right? Uh, because we go through the Caterpillar history and our B-series pavers, our D-series pavers, our E-series pavers, all the toe point settings were different between all of those pavers, okay? But on the F-series paver, right, we're gonna talk about this. If you are paving zero to three inches thick, zero on the scale is where you wanna be, okay? You're gonna position both sides the same way. If you're paving three inches or more, increase the toe arm position one inch per inch of mat depth increase. So if I'm paving four inches thick, I want to move my toe point one inch above the zero mark. Okay, if I'm paving five inches, I want to move it two inches above the zero mark. Okay, but if you're paving zero to three inches, then zero on the scale is where you want to be. All right, this provides us with the best line of pull for our toe arms and screeds. Okay, if we want to go deep depth paving, if we're paving anywhere from 7 to 12 inches, you're going to need to change the bolt holes on the drop arm. Drop them to the lower bolt section. All right, that gives you a little extra up movement so you can get to that 12 inches thick. Okay, not too many times you're going to be paving 12 inches of asphalt intentionally, um, but you may get into cement treated base or roller compacted concrete that will cause you to have to move these. Okay, so now step three, we're gonna set our paving width. So according to our job specs, right, whatever they happen to be, whether they're 12 foot, 14 foot, uh, 16 foot, whatever they happen to be, then you're gonna try to adjust your screed extensions equally on both sides to achieve that width. Okay, we like to keep that screed balanced on both sides. So it's not trying to pull the machine one way or the other, right? You can overload the machine one way and it causes it to pull to that side, All right? So whenever possible, make sure that you have equal extension on both sides. We understand it's not always possible to do that, but whenever you can, right, that's what we recommend that you do. Okay, step four is set your main screed crown per the job specs. Now, all of our screeds have the capability of being uh, 
rooftop crown or inverted crown or positive and negative crown, if you will. Okay, so whatever your specs call for, whether it's flat, whether it's 2% positive or 1% negative, then uh, go ahead and set your crown at this point. Okay, the next step, step five, is set your extender height. Okay, two different types of screeds out there. We have a rear extendable type screed where your screed extensions are behind the main screed. And we have a front extendable screed where your screed extensions are in front of the main screed. If you have a rear extendable, right, set your extenders approximately a quarter inch. Here it says 3 16 but approximately a quarter inch or that first mark above zero, right? If you have a front extendable, <coughs> excuse me, if you have a front extendable, drop the extender below the main screed, right? So it'll be the first mark below the zero, okay? And this helps us establish our initial angle of attack whenever we take off with the screed, okay? Now, notice that everything was done so far, and then we go to step six, right? All of this is done with the screed still in the air, okay? So we don't make any of these physical adjustments on the, on the machine, right, with the screed on the ground. So everything is in the air. So step six here, we're going to set the extender slope, okay? Now, here we're set to zero. So there's no slope in our extenders, right? Um, if you are going to pick up a shoulder where you have additional slope in that shoulder, you can slope that extender off to whatever it happens to be per the spec. Okay, so we always want to do this with the screed in the air. All right, step seven. Now we're going to prepare the screed. We're going to get it ready to set down. First thing we need to do is go over here and check our end gates. Make sure our end gates are up high enough that whenever you lower that screed down, you don't set the screed weight on the end gates and double block it. Okay, because those end gates, they will support the, the screed and whenever you go to null it out, it will give you a false null on it. Okay, so before we set it down, we're gonna raise the end gates up. Then we're going to select the starting reference. That's the proper thickness and length. Okay, so if you're taking off from new grade and you're having to build it up, you didn't want to build a pad, okay, you can select your starting reference. Like here, they've selected a two by four, right? So I, I guess they're going to pave an uh, inch and a half thick, right? You want that two by four to be long enough to protrude out the leading edge of the uh, main screed and all the way to the trailing edge of the extender screed. You want to be able to support both of your screed sections. Okay, place the uh, reference right in line with the pivot point. Here's the pivot point of your extender, right? I always tell the, the operators to just use the thickness screw as your reference line. So if you throw that wood piece of wood under there, Right at that reference point, then you should be good. Or at that thickness control point, uh, you should be good. Make sure again that you're supporting the main screed and the extender screed. If you're taking off from a header, right, always make sure that your starting reference is the proper thickness to allow for compaction. Okay, so you know if you if you ended the day and rolled it out and you're two inches thick. Right, when you come back the next day, you're going to have to have something at least a half an inch thick to put under here to allow for compaction. Okay, so next we're going to put the screed in float. We're still in step seven. Right, so on the F-series paver, we have to make sure we're in the pave mode, which is up here. So we'll push this button till this green light comes on. Right, and then we'll come over here and we'll float the screed down. Okay, make sure this light is illuminated. Right? The screed will float to the ground. Okay, once the screed is on the ground or on your reference points, 
Now we want to move the machine forward to remove the slack from the toe point. Okay, you can see there's a little bit of slack in this toe point here. There's a slot right here. And when you set the screed down, that pin will be in the back half of that slot most of the time. So you need to pull the machine forward to remove that slack in the pin. Whenever you do move that machine forward, you will actually see that screed roll over just a little bit as you pull forward. Okay, now we're going to move on to step eight. Step eight is what we call null the screed. Okay, we're going to take our thickness control screw on one side of the screed, and we're going to turn it left and right or clockwise and counterclockwise until no resistance is felt on the screw. Okay, this is called the null point or the no load point. Okay, we want to do that on one side. Don't care which side you start with. Then move to the opposite side of the screed and do the same thing on the opposite side of the screed. Then come back and check the first one you did. Okay, always make sure that they return to that no load position. You may have to readjust the first one, right, to find that null position again. Okay, then go back to the other one, check it, make sure it didn't change. Okay, once we get the null position, all right, then we're going to take that thickness screw and we're going to turn it in the direction of increase until tension is felt. Okay, so if you look at your decal on the thickness screw, you can see on this one the decal, sa decal says clockwise is increase or positive, counterclockwise is decrease. So we're going to turn this thickness screw clockwise until we feel tension on the screw. And we'll do the same thing to the other screw as well. Now, keep in mind that we do offer thickness screws that go both directions. So uh, some people prefer that they go counterclockwise to increase thickness and clockwise to decrease the thickness. So always look at the decal, especially on a new machine. Make sure you know which direction you're going. Okay, once you get them, little tension on them, then lock them in place. Okay, this video is going to show you what happens when we establish our extender height and everything else on the machine correctly. So here, we see that uh, Okay, we raised our extender up that quarter of an inch. Boy, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, we're going to skip the video here and uh, proceed on. All right, that one video was just illustrating how whenever you put your extender up to the proper height, right, and set down on your blocks and null it out, right, the extender or the screed's gonna roll back, right, until it touches that extender, right, and that's gonna be the proper angle of attack for takeoff, okay? If you get, uh, if you um, set it down and you null it out and uh, you bring uh, too many turns into it, like we've seen a lot of people that'll go out there and they'll put two, three turns in that thickness screw after they've hit the null point, Right, then you rock back on that extender screed, right, and you support the uh, entire weight of the screed with the extender screed. And when you come off the blocks, you're either going to come off way high with the extenders dragging, right, or uh, it's just going to fall right off the blocks. Okay, step nine is uh, we're going to position our end gates. Now, this is a personal preference uh, how you want your end gate set up on the on the machine. Um, if you're going to run the end gates down in, uh, and they're engaging the surface, then we want to try to get a little um, down pressure on our spring. So we tell you to put a gap between the washer and the frame of approximately one inch. That keeps enough down pressure on that spring or on your uh, end gate to keep that in, uh, engaged with the ground. Okay, obviously, if you're going to run it up on a joint next to you, 
right? You don't want a lot of down pressure on it, so you may adjust that, right? Uh, so again, uh, adjust them accordingly if you like to run your end gates down or if you like to run them up. Uh, makes no difference to me how you run them, okay? So step nine was adjust the end gates. Step 10, step your, set your auger height. Okay, your auger height can have a definite effect on your mat texture. Okay, we're going to set our auger height approximately two inches above the mat, right? And that's going to be right for most of your mixes up there, right? Then you're going to fine tune according to your mix. So once you start paving, right, you see auger stripes, you see drag marks, right? Adjust your augers accordingly. So here we're showing the tape measure measuring to the center line of that auger shaft, right? Calculate that your auger shaft is, uh, or your augers are 16 inches in diameter on this particular machine. Split that in half. So you got eight inches hanging down, two inches below that, and then the thickness of the mat that you're paving. So that will, so if you're paving two inches thick, right? And you've got eight inch plus two inches, which is 10. Right, then you're two inches, so that's 12 inches. So that's where the center line of that auger shaft should be. Okay, again, only a starting point. Okay, now we're gonna position our feeder sensors. All right, pull that feeder sensor out. This is the old mechanical style sensor. We don't see a lot of these in the field anymore, but we still see them. Okay, raise that paddle arm out to a 45 degree angle. Position the paddle arm to approximately 18 inches outboard of your last auger segment. So you can see we're measuring off the last auger segment there. Pull it out 45 degrees, and then it should be approximately 18 inches. Sonic feeder sensors. All right, we're going to position that sonic feeder sensor till it's perpendicular to the live material flow. Okay, so we're going to have it shooting down on this live active material. We're going to position the face of this sonic sensor approximately 18 in inches away from the material. Okay, always target that moving material. Now, we want to draw an imaginary line from our mainframe, right, back to about one foot in front of the uh, face of the screed here. So measure about one foot up and then draw that imaginary line over to your mainframe and Set it up about as high as the middle of your auger and then aim your sonic sensor at that line. Okay, this will get you in the uh, close in the neighborhood. So um, we want to get those set. Again, target the active moving material. All right, after we get that set, now we're going to move to our material feed adjustments. So we go up to our displays. Again, on any of the four displays, all right, open that window right there. It brings up this screen. Okay, from this screen, you can adjust the percentage of your conveyors and the percentage on the augers. Okay, this is not speed. This is just the percentage. Okay, so how fast it's 40% right, of 100% and 60% of 100%. So we turn the dials till we get 40% in the window, and we turn our mix height dials until we get 60% in the window. Okay, select OK after adjusting. Now, what they're talking about there is whenever you adjust this using this scale, right? So if I hit positive and go to 65, right now this number is white. When I readjust it, that number will turn yellow, right? Before it's stored in the system, you have to come up here and press OK and turn that number back white again before it stores in the system. So keep that in mind. Always push OK after you make any changes to the scales. Okay, so we're going to select 6040 as our starting point for our feeder system. All right, again, I say starting point only. All right, now. Here we come to one of the, the main areas where people make, uh, make their mistakes, is manually fill the auger chamber. Okay, when we manually fill the auger chamber, we're gonna do it at low idle. 
right? When you go to high idle with a machine and you operate your augers or your conveyors, everything turns at 100%. It turns at full speed. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't have to turn these things at full speed to initially fill our auger chamber. So we keep the machine at low idle. We hit our conveyors, right? Pull and make the conveyors, pull the material back until the material just touches the auger shafts. All right? Once the material touches the auger shafts, then we want to go to our augers, right? Again, at a low idle, manually auger the material across the screed face. All right? Once the material quits moving, go back to your conveyor, right? Convey more material out till it's touching the augers and auger that material out until you come and you establish a half an auger level. Do not overfill your auger chamber, okay? Don't operate your augers and your conveyors at the same time when you're filling this up initially. The machine is sitting still, and any time you operate the conveyors and the augers together, you're pulling material underneath the machine as well as spreading the material out in front of the screed. Right? We don't need that material under the screed or under the machine Right? It creates a larger head of material that we don't need to be pulling all day. Okay, Don't try to push material out to the end gate. Use a shovel, right? pull the material, and hand fill the auger between the end gate and the auger. Okay? If you have a rear mount screed, right? don't try to fill in the area between the uh, extender screed and the main screed there. Uh, Shown in red there is the no-fill area. Okay, as you pull forward, the extender screed will pick up the material and it will fill all that in. All right, once we get everything full, now we're going to place our feeder system in automatic. We're still on step 13. So on the F-Series paver, we have a one-button push. So we can come up here and we can press this button, and it turns all four of our systems to automatic. Okay, so you have your two conveyors and your two augers that it will place in automatic for you. When you have to take the system out of automatic, just push this button again and it shuts the system back to manual. Okay, or if you don't want to use that single button push, then you can go in and push the auto button at each one of these. Okay, me, I'm lazy. I like to push just one button, get it all done, take care of it. All right, step 14. This is the step we added to our um, paving by the numbers. Step 14, we found that uh, when people were setting up their machine that uh, a lot of times they would jump ahead and try to set their grade controls up before anything else. Okay, we want you to wait till after you get the machine fully loaded, right? Material against the screed, screed's nulled out, and everything is ready to go before you set your grade and slope system up. If you don't do this, you set it up before you get all the stuff done to your screed, then you're just going to have to come back and reset it anyway. Okay, so at step 14, this is where we want you to set your accessory functions and your grade and slope business one of your accessory functions. Okay, so set your grade and slope to your specifications. All right, we won't talk a whole lot about that. Uh, we'll have save that for another talk, uh, but we wanna set our grade and slope up now. And then we have additional accessory functions within the machine. We have screed assist. We have a number of other different functions that you can set at this point. Okay, so you can read your operation and maintenance manual and uh, see what all your different accessory functions are if you don't know already. Step 15, now we're going to take off. Okay, so we're pulling off our starting reference. First thing, make sure you're in the pave mode. Okay, if you're not in the pave mode, you won't go to float, right? which is number two over here. Make sure you're in the float mode. Okay, then select what throttle you're going to use, right? Whether you're going to use eco mode or whether you're going to go to high idle with it. Okay, then number four, 
right? Is your speed dial, all right? Once we look at our speed dial here, we can adjust the target speed of the machine. Number five up here indicates our target speed. Right now it says 193 feet per minute, right? I don't think we're gonna be paving that fast. So we would dial that back to whatever our paving speed was calculated at, right? And normally we calculate our paving speed to the material tonnage that we're gonna get. Okay, so let's say we calculated that we're gonna run 40 feet a minute. All right, we dial this back till it reads 40 up here. Okay, that's gonna be our target speed. All right, then we release our parking brake and we pull the trigger here, all right? Pull the trigger and now we push our propel lever gradually all the way forward. All right, once we get all the way forward, your machine will come up to the 40 feet a minute that you put in up here, all right? And your actual speed of the machine will read out in this window up here next to number five. Okay, so once you take off with it, right? Established, you've established your paving speed up here at 40 feet a minute. When you bring your propel lever back to neutral, the machine will stop. All right? When you pull the trigger and push the propel lever all the way forward, you come right back to the 40 feet a minute every time. S consistent speed is very important on a paver. We want to avoid any slowdowns or speed ups anytime we can. Okay, we want to keep that speed consistent all the time. So now once we've taken off, right, there's a few things that you have to do now. Still on step 15, we pulled off our starting reference, right? Our screed guys are going to check the material level at the outboard end of the augers. Okay, they're going to try to maintain the mix height, right, at half an auger. So they're taking their mix height dial, they're adjusting it up and down, and they're looking at the feet of material coming back to the extender screed over here, making sure they've got enough material without overfeeding. The guy upstairs, operator, all right, he can be looking down at the center of his auger chamber and he's looking at the material coming into the center. He's also trying to maintain half an auger, but he also tries to maintain the auger speed, right? We wanna to try to maintain them augers at about 20 to 40, RPMs. So in order to increase the auger speed, if they're going too slow or starting and stopping, then we're getting too much material in the chamber here. So he needs to slow the material feed down. So he'll turn his ratio dial down to adjust the feed, right? If they're going too fast, then that indicates he's not bringing enough material back. So he needs to turn the ratio, ratio dial up right, until he brings enough material back to slow those augers down. Okay, but again, he's trying to maintain a half an auger and also maintain a 20 to 40 RPM range. Okay, so there we go. As paving stabilizes, check your auger speed, keep the speed between 20 and 40 RPM range. Definitely avoid on and off operation. On and off operation will cause you a lot of different issues, can cause uh, your screed to drag, can cause the, uh, the texture of the material behind you to uh, show open texture, right? can create a lot of different issues. Okay, again, as we uh, continue on with step 15, there are a lot of things going on here. When we are, are looking at the mat behind us, we want to have a consistent mat all the way across, okay? We don't want to have any separation marks in the mat from our rear mounted extenders, right? It should be uniform all the way across like shown there, okay? If we show extender marks or our extenders are too low, right, as shown here and here, then that means that the extenders are too low. We need to just raise those up. Okay, there are controls on the uh, screed control boxes and on the uh, pendant out here on the side where you can raise and lower those extenders. Okay, anytime you adjust an extender, it is a immediate response. So you don't have to wait a few toe arm lengths for that to happen. It happens right away. 
So here we're going to raise that extender until the lines disappear. Okay, if our extenders are too high, they mark with the outer edge and the main screed. So now we just need to do the same thing. We just need to lower the extenders until that transition line disappears. Okay, once the transition line disappears, then you've got gauges in here that shows you the height of that extender. Now, if you remember back on, I think, step four, step five, we uh, adjusted the extender height. When we adjust the extender height, we came up the first notch above zero, right? That's basically a quarter inch above zero. So if we look at our, if we get all of our marks out of here, okay, and we go back to this mat right here, Okay, again, nice and even all the way across. Look at the scale back here on your extender, right? See where that scale is running at, right? It should be running right at the quarter inch mark or the first notch above zero. If it's running at the one inch mark, right, or higher, that indicates that you're running at too high an angle of attack on the screed. All right, and you need to make some different adjustments on the machine. If you're running at zero or in the minus section, then you need to also make an adjustment on the screed. Indicates that your screed is running flat, all right, and it's bulldozing material. Okay, so that's one way you can tell how your screed is running, what the angle of attack of the screed is. Okay, the screed angle of attack should be anywhere from eight to a quarter inch, right? And uh, by looking at that scale on the back, you can tell right away what the angle of attack is of that screed. All right, while you're paving along there, keep your constant speed like we said a minute ago, right? Any speed changes, right, will cause you bumps or dips. You increase the speed of the machine, the screed has a tendency to drop. You decrease the speed of the machine, has a tendency to rise. Okay, if you speed, if you have to change your speed, right, you get more trucks or you get more material coming in, right, adjust your feeder system if your speed change, speed has to change. All right, that concludes the paving by the numbers. I wanna thank you very much for your time and attention. And again, uh, don't forget to check back in next week and they'll talk about the, uh, the new 150 all wheel drive motor grader, right? And the customer value agreements. Thank you very much again for your time and attention.